What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another DevaCrypt Projects demo. Uh, I know we said last week, I said last week, this is my fault. I said last week that we're gonna do Monotype Workshop this week, but we're gonna do Woodcut instead. Um, I'm a huge fan of Woodcuts. Myself and Spongseni have worked on a lot of Woodcut projects at David Crit. Um, we work quite closely with Gillian Ross and the rest of the team on many woodcut projects. Uh, Joao Rekia, uh, William Kentridge being the biggest of them or the most, the most intense, um, the most interesting for me in terms of how the wood grain functions in relation to the series or the project either conceptually or aesthetically. Um, so I think it's pretty important and beautiful that we go through producing the actual blocks, different processes to make the, the wood blocks that you're going to be carving and drawing onto and printing eventually, as well as what the grain does. Um, I've already prepared my paper. This is the block we're going to be printing today. Um, yeah, welcome. So as I said, we did lino cut last week, which is a relief process of printmaking and woodcut which we're going to do today is a relief process too so relief is is pretty much a, a stamp so rolling the surface of the matrix or the plate with ink and then transferring that rolled surface to a piece of paper um, so any any mark that you're making anything that you're carving away from the plate is going to be negative space um, so that that's what constitutes uh, a relief print. I've laid out a lino cut plate here and a wood block here um, Just to briefly discuss the differences and similarities. So as you can see they're both the logic of carving the plates or the blocks is Pretty much the same everything that you carve away will read as negative space so you're carving around the lines that you make with a pen or a pencil or a marker, um, or whatever it is you're drawing onto the plate with. Um, carving around the marks that you're painting with ink and a brush in this case, in the case of this William Kentridge test over here. Um, the lino is linoleum, which is a synthetic material used um, for flooring. And wood is, is obviously different kinds of wood. So this wood block over here is veneered ash wood, which means it's a really, really thin layer of, of ash wood glued onto a backing board, which is usually super wood or MDM or MDF or a material such as that. So the importance with woodcut is the grain. So we saw last week that when you ink up and print a lino cut, it's it's really beautiful, flat, um, either black in our case or whatever other color you decide to print with. But with woodcuts, you get grain. Different timbers have different kinds of grain and those grains add to the image in really interesting and beautiful ways. So none of these striations in this print were carved. This is the nature of the block. So the nature of ashwood is these beautiful grains that happen in the positive area of the image. So these carved marks that you can very see, clearly see here are cut into the block. And these striations that exist in the black space are the wood grain from the ash wood that's been veneered onto the surface. So there's a few different ways to make the actual wood blocks and I'm gonna take you through three ways in which you can lay out or configure your actual woodcut block um, to help with printing or carving and get your desired outcome in terms of production of the block and the carving of the block. So the first one is a veneer. So this is a process where 
A really, really thin sheet of wood grain is glued and attached to a backing board. The wood cut block, the, the wood block that we looked at um, is an ash wood veneer, which we discussed. And this is, this is a sheet of ash wood. So it's a really, really thin sheet. It's almost peeled off the tree into really large sheets and those sheets are veneered to the surface of the block. So essentially, the sheet is glued onto a substrate backing. So this is a, an ash wood veneer, and this is an oak veneer. You can see the difference in the two grains, um, which hopefully makes it clearer why we'd either put two different wood grains, wood grains together onto one block to have a shift in grain, or why you'd be able to put multiple grains on one image area. The second method you can use um, to produce or build the actual woodcuts is with different timber planks. So um, you can have planks that are the same height of different kinds of wood that would be run through the press all at once. Um, here's an example of Oregon pine and panga panga which is a really hard Mozambican wood, which has beautiful grain and texture in the wood itself. Um, these are both really, really early William Kentridge tests. And yeah. This is the, the third technique I'm gonna show you on how to build a wood block um, and it's it's kind of a combination of the first two that we saw this is the process that myself Sponseni Kulu, Jillian Ross and the rest of the team you ended up using to um, produce William Kentridge's woodcuts for the Triumphs and the Men's series and it is a process in which Thick planks are used as a veneer on top of a really strong um, backing or substrate. In this case, we have African walnut, oak, and saligna backed onto a really thick and stable plywood. So doing this in some ways prevents the, the wood blocks from warping and changing due to the weather, humidity, and climate in the studio. Um, it also provides more stability and yeah, helps with, especially if you're having different grains veneered onto a substrate, having the thicker woods with the thicker base um, prevents all of those issues that you might find with the thinner veneers. So as you can see with this veneer, how quickly and easily it warped versus the thick solid block that we have here. So this is the veneer test block that we're going to be printing from today. Um, I don't know if you can see the grain, but you will be able to once we print it. Uh, on this block, we have um, three wood grains side by side. This is oak, ash, and mahogany. And we'll see what the grains translate, translate as on a print once we proof them. So in the last demo, when we were printing lino cuts, um, I spoke about rolling up your slab and your plate with, with ink so you get uh, an orange peel or a grapefruit skin texture. Um, printing wood cuts is almost the same, except the aim is to apply less ink 
onto the block and slowly build it up with thinner layers over time. Um, the reason why we do that is because when you have really intense grains, different kinds of wood grains in your block, you want to try to get as much of that detail onto the print as possible. So your slab will be a really thin layer of ink, the ink on your roller will be a thin layer of ink, and you want to slowly build it up so that the ink doesn't flood the grain or bleed in any way. Um, as beautiful as your plates or your blocks look, we always have to make sure that it translates from the carving process or the, produ the block production process into a good print. Um, we're always aiming for good prints. As printmakers, the print is the thing that's gonna exist. The addition of prints is the thing that's gonna exist. And that's the thing, that's the, the kind of series of objects in which your skill is gonna transfer as a printer. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna show you kind of how much ink to apply and the process that it takes to build up ink to maintain as much grain in your print as you possibly can. So you can see it's still an orange peel, but the, the kind of dots that you can see on the surface of the ink are a lot finer and they're a lot closer together, which means there's less ink on the surface, which is a good thing. Also keep in mind the subtle change in the sound <clears throat> that the rollers make, the rollers making as you're running it over the, the ink slab. It's a quieter hissing sound, um, which means, again, that there's less ink on the slab. And now that we've inked up our slab, we're ready to start inking up the woodcut. So that's the inked up block. Um, you can see the shininess and the really thin application of ink on the surface. And as I said, we have mahogany on the left. We have ash in the middle and we have oak on the right. So you can see the three different wood grains as they are on the prints, as they are on the block, um, and how they translate. Um, this is it's very important when you're using different kinds of timbers to do test proofs to understand what the actual grains translate like onto paper. 
Different grains of different woods translate completely differently depending on even how they, they cut the wood. How the plank is cut, how the veneer is made. If the tree is, is sliced in a kind of lateral or horizontal way, that affects what the grain will translate like onto the print. So the wood block we have, on the wood block we have mahogany, ash and oak and that translates to the print being mahogany on the left, ash in the middle and oak on the right. So I've laid out the wood block that we just printed, the woodcut print that we just ran together and then two other prints that I did yesterday just to give you an idea of how woodcut can be layered with lino, how it can be used in conjunction with what we covered last week and how you can bring another layer of depth or complexity aesthetically to your prints using wood grain. So what I did here is a really amazing example of how you can use wood grain in conjunction with other other kind of processes to really bring out and layer um, and create complexity in your prints. So this print on the right is just pieces of lino. It's pieces of flat li linoleum that are cut into shapes that are inked up in different colors and printed as a first layer or a first run. And on the left, I took another test using that same lino cut process and printed a woodcut that woodcut test block that we that we did together on top of the lino. So you can see how the grain really starts to shift and read differently. And the lino underneath, a different color, lino pieces underneath, really start to create volume and bring out, the lino cut brings out the woodcut grain in different ways. Um, and this is a really simple thing to do. In two demos, we discussed how to ink up, register and print lino. And today we went through wood grain and how it functions and how to ink it up. So uh, this is a, a two layer print with woodcut and linoleum. And yeah. So as I said at the beginning of the demo, um, there's two particular projects that, or there's two particular wood block, woodcut projects that stand out for me in terms of the use of the blocks and the grain to aesthetically or conceptually add to the series of work. Um, two such projects that the David Crude team worked on are um, Joao Rekia's series of woodcuts um, for his last solo show at David Crude Projects, and of course, William Kentridge's Triumphs and Laments. Um, what's interesting about those two is that they Aesthetically, they use, we use the grain in, in different ways for the same purpose. So what happens with, with those two prints is the wood grain itself um, creates really atmospheric moments in, in the prints. Parts of Joao Rekia's woodcut prints were hand carved and other parts were laser cut when you layer them create like really as atmospheric really organic marks um, almost like tv or sound static in in the background of the image um, some of them are two to three layer with flat color monotype similar to the the lino cut and woodcut test i showed you guys earlier um, monotype woodcuts and another woodcut layer some of them are just monotype woodcuts and looking at those prints in relation to joao's synthesizer compositions or drum kit compositions you can really start to feel through the prints how the wood grain adds to that atmospheric static and the quite linear geometric aspects of um of his compositions versus the hand-carved um, experiences that he transcribes onto the plates. 
William Kentridge's Triumphs and Lament series does a similar thing, but in a completely different way, in that the the planks and the wood blocks are produced and configured in a way that adds dimension and layer aesthetically to the image. Um, so if you see the woodcuts, if you're fortunate enough to see the woodcuts in real life, or to even see them on a photo, you can see um, because they're so big, the the different wood grains and different planks are laid out in such a way or such an orientation that they intentionally break up, fragment, and sometimes intentionally pull the image together, just using different kinds of timber to get different grains and plot it out in different areas. So a big part of, of that process of producing that series of images was not only carving the blocks, but also right at the beginning sitting together as a team with William to configure those blocks, which wood grains go where on which blocks in which part of the image, um, how can different types of of wood grain bring forward or push back certain parts of, of William's drawings and the fact that the grain comes through is an integral part of each of those projects and I think those are two really good examples of how how wood grain pushed the project further than it could have been. Unfortunately we've come to the end. I don't want to babble for too much longer. So thank you for joining me again in my home studio. Thank you again for visiting David Crick Project's uh, demo series and we'll see you again next week.